Conrad Kurz, the Night Haunter. Plagued by dark visions of the future, Conrad's path seemed inevitable to his tortured mind. But there was a moment, a brief point in his past where his road split. Without spoiling things, the Night Haunter book explores one possible future for Conrad, one which he ultimately turned away from. But what if he didn't? What if the decision on that fateful night had led him towards a destiny that didn't see him turn traitor? What if the Night Haunter became the weapon wielded by the Imperium to unleash terror on the forces of chaos? What if Conrad Kurz remained loyal? The basis of this conversion was the new Lion Al Johnson miniature, which was sent to me early by Games Workshop. The stature of this model was correct, and the gothic armor stylings of the lion's armor would lead nicely into recreating Conrad's nightmare mantle. And so I began by clipping away and cleaning up all the parts required to build the torso. The first modification involved removing any specific dark angel markings. This included the sword and wings motif on the chest and knee pad. These were carefully shaved away using my scalpel before I scraped the surfaces clean. This was followed up by clipping away the purity seals from the leg and then smoothing out the armor once again. This was done before anything was assembled. It's generally much easier to make these modifications before anything is glued together. Once anything overtly Dark Angel themed had been removed, the legs were assembled. However, at this point in the build, I'd made a decision to replace the armor plates or folds that hung from the belt with something a little more Night Lord themed. But to do this, the plate on the right leg had to be removed. The bulk of the plastic was clipped away, but the last remaining chunks were removed with my knife, scraping things back until the smooth surface of the cloth had been restored. In order to recreate Conrad Kurz's lightning claws, mercy and forgiveness, I dipped into the Black Templar Sword Brethren. Now these are technically one blade more than Kurz's original claws, but maybe he saw a picture of an ancient Terran hero and decided one extra blade. To attach these to the torso, the lion's right arm first needed to be clipped away, just below the elbow. After comparing the new gauntlet and the arm, a few small trims needed to be made to both sides in order to allow the parts to match up. Once things were lining up, the gauntlet was glued into place. This process was then repeated for the left arm. I first clipped and trimmed back the left elbow before gluing the left lightning claw in place. With both arms attached to the torso, the torso was attached to the legs. Like with the armor, the cloak also features dark angel emblems and a jagged trim, which needed to be removed. This was done in the same way as before, with the trim being carefully shaved away bit by bit before smoothing out the surface afterwards. Once everything had be de-angeled, the cloak was assembled before being glued to the torso. The next detail to focus on was Kurz's head. Finding an adequate bear head that was suitably scaled to a Primarch proved tricky, so I instead opted for a helmeted, hooded option. Plus, I felt that the hood helped with that dark, brooding aspect of Kurz. Taking inspiration from the Heresy-era Nightlord heads, I decided to combine the grimacing skull mass from the Necromunda corpse grinders with the hooded, helmeted head. I first clipped away as much of the helmet as possible without damaging the hood around it, making the interior of the hood as empty as I could. After comparing the mask, I made a series of small clips so that it could sit within the hood. This was done incrementally and slowly. By making frequent comparisons, I ensured that everything was lining up and that I wasn't cutting away too much. Once the two parts were fitting together, the mask was glued inside the hood, but I kept the head separate for the time being. The lion pelt that comes with the kit didn't make much sense for Conrad, but it could be easily modified to represent a more human-like flayed skin. While my interpretation of Kurz was loyal to the Emperor, his main job was still to induce terror, and so the skins of his victims would still adorn his armor. To modify the pelt, I clipped away the paws and removed the fur texture, shaving away the details like I did with the cloak. By the time I was done, the pelt had the appearance of a ragged skin. But I wasn't done with the peeled skin just yet. I wanted to add more, so I cut up and mixed some green stuff, 
This was placed between the pelt and the shoulder pad before being flattened out and cut into ragged strips. I made sure to use Vaseline across my fingers and tools here to help prevent the putty from sticking. Once the basic shapes were established, I added small holes and cuts to the edges. Once the left shoulder had been tackled, the same details were added to the right. To recreate the gothic appearance of Conrad and his Night Lords, I decided to swap out the original shoulder pads that came with the Lion for a pair of Mortec Guard Shields. These were the ideal size and shape for a Primarch, but the arm holding them needed to be removed. These were first clipped away before what was left was ground back with my Dremel. Once the insides of the shield had been flattened, the shields were glued into place as shoulder pads. After gluing the shoulder pads, I was left with a few gaps between the pad and the shoulder. So to fix this, I added more green stuff. Like before, I continued to create some ragged strips of skin, continuing the skin cloak at the back. While I still had some green stuff mixed, I decided to add a few extra strips of flesh across the shoulder pad and the leg. These were formed from small, flat, rectangular strips of green stuff, which were pressed onto the armor. The ends were cut to have a tattered appearance, and a small 1mm ball bearing was gently pressed into the top of the strip, representing a pin holding it into place. With the bulk of the model complete, all I was left to do now was to add some extra details. The first of these were some extra Night Lord styled armor taken from the Luca Vi kit. These were added around the waist to replace the armor that was removed earlier. A few hooked chains were then sourced from the Zombie Dragon. These were cut in half and dotted around the model, perfect for hooking a few more body parts. This was followed up with some flensing blades which were attached to the waist. These were taken from the Kroot Carnival kit. But this wouldn't be a true Night Lord kit bash without one important thing. Dead animal bits. And lots of them. The first of these were some severed hands from the Kroot Farstalker kill team which were attached to the shoulder pad. Several femurs were taken from the Crypt Ghouls, a few were attached to the cloak with another being clipped in half to have a sharp point before also being attached. Just make sure that you leave enough room for the power pack to be attached later on. The femurs were followed up with some skulls. The backs needed to be clipped and smoothed out a bit so they could be properly joined to the cloak. The same was then repeated with a Soul Blight Gravelord zombie head. This time however, it was glued to the shoulder pad as a grisly trophy alongside another skull. To restore some of the detail removed from the left leg, I took the skull necklace also found within the zombie dragon kit and hung it just below the knee pad. Finally, a couple more heads were attached to the power pack in order to hide some of the Dark Angel details. Finally, in order to offset some of those skulls and severed hands, and firmly cement Conrad as being a loyalist, I attached a few purity seals across the armor. These can be found in most Space Marine kits. With Conrad complete, work could begin on his base. I didn't want to use the original base that came with the model, as I wanted to further separate him from his original kit. Instead, I aim to create the appearance of a decaying ship, rusting and collapsing around them, a ship belonging to some Nurgle corrupted space marines. This was done with a number of scenery components, wire mesh, plastic card and rods. The mesh was laid down and superglued across the surface of the base, giving the impression of a metallic deck. A vent from some Mechanicum scenery was then added, followed by a few lengths of plastic rod in various sizes. These were laid so that they spread out from the central vent, but just make sure you use super glue to attach these. Regular plastic glue won't stick to the metal of the mesh. After adding more pipes, girders, lamps, and scenery pieces to create a ramp of sorts across the center of the base, the finishing touch was added in the form of a Death Guard helmet. After clipping away the ball joints from beneath, it was super glued to the base. With the base complete, I was nearly ready to paint. This would be made easier by keeping the head, pack, torso, and base all separated. However, to make holding onto these parts possible, I created some wire holders. Adding these involved drilling 1mm holes into some of the contact points before supergluing a length of 1mm wire into them. This was repeated for each of the separate components, as well as drilling a hole into the base that I could attach Conrad to later on. And with that, everything was ready to be painted. 
As always, the first step in painting was to prime, and for this, I chose black. This was chosen to help create the dark shadows in the recesses and was applied via my airbrush, but feel free to apply your own primer in whatever way you prefer. To paint this model, I mostly used paints from the Tooth & Coats range and started off with the metallics, specifically the steel areas. I began with a mixture of Doom Death Black and Sukkot Silver in order to create a darker silver. But before application, it was first thinned out with a little water and applied as instructed in two thin coats. By allowing the first layer to dry fully before applying the second, it ensured that a good solid base color was created. While the base coat was quite dark already, there were a few areas where I wanted to deepen the recesses a little further. Using some Oblivion black wash, I applied a layer across all of the silver details. Here, the wash flowed into and darkened down the details, creating shadows. The details were further built upon by first applying a highlight of the brighter silver of plate armor. This involved applying a fine line of paint across the edges. By lightening these details up, it further separated them from the darker shadows. This was followed up with an extreme highlight of the even brighter Mithril Blade. This was applied to just the sharpest points where two edges converged to create a corner. Further building upon the highlights formed in the previous step. The process was then repeated across the bronze details, beginning with Spartan Bronze. By tackling all of the metallics first, it essentially meant that any mistakes could be more easily touched up. Painting over metallics with black is generally much easier than doing the same for other colors. The base coat was followed up with a wash of flesh wash. The slightly reddish hue of the wash complemented the bronze coloration nicely. To highlight the bronze areas, I created a mixture of Spartan bronze and Mithril blade. The result was a slightly more washed out yet brighter bronze than before, which helped to lift out those details. This was followed up with an extreme highlight created by mixing even more Mithril Blade into the previous mix. Once this step was completed, I changed out my paint water to avoid the metal flakes and could begin work on the rest of the model. With the metallics complete, work could be started on the non-metallic areas. The first step of this was to apply all of the base colors and this would be achieved with a series of glazes. But first, the glaze needed to be mixed. This was done by mixing together some Berserk Red and Glaze Medium in equal amounts. The result was a paint that had a similar consistency as before, but was more translucent. This meant that when it was applied over the black base coat, it still showed through a little. The benefit of this was that I could steadily build up the layers to intensify the red coloration exactly where I wanted it, on the raised folds of the cloak rather than in the recesses. As each subsequent layer covered a slightly smaller area than before, it helped to build up a transition between the dark shadows in the recesses and the lighter points in the upper folds. The same process was then continued for each of the subsequent base coats. To create the midnight blue of the Night Lord's armor, I began with marine blue. Again, I focused on and around the harder edges of the armor whilst leaving the recesses dark, creating that black to dark blue transition. The flayed skin was then coated with some barbarian brawn, before giving the bones and the parchment a coat of wizard grey. Grey might not seem like an obvious choice for the bones, but I planned on adding a little light tan coloration later on. The leather of the belt and the handles of the flensing knives were then coated with some cuirass leather, before finishing off the base coats with a little wyvern green applied over the purity seals. With the starting layers in place, these could be built upon. The first of these was an all-over glaze of the contrast paint Flesh Terra's Red. This was again mixed in with some glaze medium to tone down the strength, but once prepped, the paint was applied across all of the red areas. All-over glazes like this helped to blend and unify the previous transitions together. I personally find contrast paints really good for this sort of work, as they'll go some way to boosting the intensity of the red. After applying an all-over glaze, the paint was left to dry. From here, I could work on the highlights. I started with Sanguine Scarlet and picked out the raised folds. Some of these are a little softer and don't have a defined hard edge, so I coated a slightly larger area than normal. This was then followed up with an extreme highlight of Demon Red 
that was used to pick out the sharper points. Before blending everything together with another glaze, this time using Blood Angel's Red mixed with medium in the same way as before. The armor was then tackled in the exact same way, albeit with different colors. First was a highlight of Elysium Blue, followed up with an extreme highlight of Celestial Blue over the many sharp points in the armor. Before finishing off with an all over glaze of Talisar Blue Contrast Paint and Glaze Medium. The flayed skin was next, and I first hit this with an edge highlight of Dwarven Skin. The most prominent points were then picked out with Elven Skin, with the final step being a light glaze of Dark Oath Flesh. The next step was to tackle the bones and parchment. These were first given a highlight of Carcaridon Grey, and then a small spot highlight of White Star. Finally, to help bring back the slight tan coloration to these areas, I gave them a light glaze of Agaros Dunes. The result was a slightly faded and bleached bone and parchment look. From here, the belt and knife handles were highlighted with some boar hide, and then extreme highlighted with fur cloak. To build upon the reddish brown of the leather, I then give everything a glaze of griff hound orange. The wax on the purity seals was highlighted with emerald green, followed up by some small spots of ethereal green, and finally a quick glaze of warp lightning. But before I finished off the model, I felt that the skin looked a little too fresh. So in order to tone down this a little and to give the skin a slightly more decaying look, I gave the recesses of the skin a glaze of Majos purple. Which brought me to the base. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted this to have the appearance of a rusting and decaying ship. And the first step in achieving this was to give everything a dry brush of surcoat silver. This dry brush involved placing a small amount of paint onto a large brush before working the paint through the bristles on my palette. The small amount of paint left in the brush was then quickly dragged across the details in the base, which caused the paint to accumulate onto the flat surfaces and raised edges. The recesses remained dark, helping to achieve those shadows quickly and easily. The details were then further picked out by a second, lighter dry brush of Mithril Blade. So far, I had a good metal surface, but it needed corroding. This would be achieved incredibly simply by using some dirty down rust. This was applied straight from the pot across the whole base. After applying an initial layer, I then took a brush loaded with water and used it to better spread the paint across the surfaces. As the dirty down rust dries, the effect begins to form, resulting in this incredibly realistic rust appearance. This process was then repeated across the entire base. The Death Guard helmet that I'd added to the base earlier was then painted in red, using the same steps that I performed on the cloak earlier. Red might seem like an odd choice for Death Guard, but this helmet was instead intended to be that of a Nurgle, corrupted Blood Angel. The final detail was to add a little object source lighting to the base, using the broken light fixture as the source. To do this, I used some Trooper White and a little more dry brushing to apply it around the light and onto any nearby surfaces that face the light, such as the mesh floor, the helmet, and the side of the vent. A green glow was created by glazing some striking scorpion green over the white dry brushing that had been applied in the last step. The glaze, like before, smooths out the dry brushing whilst also giving the light a lurid green color, which will contrast nicely against the surrounding orange rust nicely. From here, all that was needed to do were the last few finishing touches, such as cleaning up the room of the base with some Doom Death Black, giving everything a coat of satin varnish to seal in the paintwork, before I finally assembled the miniatures by removing the wires, cleaning up the contact points, and gluing everything together, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Loyalist Conrad Kurz built from the Lion Al Johnson miniature. While I tried to use the original Forge World Kurz as a guide for this conversion, building an exact copy seemed redundant. So I tried to focus on creating something that had elements of the original whilst also bringing something new to the table, much like the plastic Gilliman and Lion miniatures do. I think that I've managed 
to achieve that. So, if you enjoyed this guide, be sure to check out some of my previous alternate heresy builds and leave me your own suggestions for other conversions and kit bashes that you would like to see me tackle. Now, before someone mentioned it in the comments below, the lack of lightning across the armor is intentional. While this is commonly depicted in the artwork and background for the Night Lords, I couldn't find anything that specifically showed Conrad's armor to do the same, so I erred on the side of caution and base it on his Forge World miniature. But if you're looking to recreate this miniature and color scheme, I'll include all the kits and paints using this guide in the description below, along with some affiliate links to where you can pick them up for yourself. Now before I go, let me say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members who help keep this channel going, especially my expert tier and above supporters who are Jonathan Hart, Maciej Savitsky, Tim, Daniel Dowling, Joachim Falk, Johans, Jonathan Sandsteed, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, Palejuice, Swedsman, and the Googles. And my sergeant level members who are Fair Statement, Mr. Jared Hess95, Nerdington Paints, Mark Taylor, Whale Tussler, and Philip Poya. If you are interested in supporting me, you can hit the join button below or find a link to my Patreon in the description. Supporters get a whole host of benefits, including ad-free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. Speaking of merchandise, I also have a few t-shirts and mugs up for sale featuring designs drawn by me. You can check those out by following the links below or by going over to PeteTheWarGamer.com. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.